everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today we are making the Grand Canal Shawl. Now I made this specially to take with me to Venice and oh my goodness, I did wear it there. And it made such a perfect addition to my wardrobe, certainly when you're on holiday. So for this shawl, I used Wendy Supreme Cotton Love. So the shawl is warm, but also light, and that's great for a summer wearable. This is a DK yarn, but I am not using a hook for DK. I have chosen to make this looser and lacier than it would be normally. So I am using a four and a half hook. You will also need a darning needle, scissors and a stitch marker if you want to keep track of your rows. So this yarn is made of acrylic and cotton which is perfect for a summer wearable. This is the colour lavender, this is the colour blush. I'm just showing you the lavender because I've run out of my blush but we have got this on our website and go and check it out and see which color you fancy. I used three balls of this yarn for this shawl. If you have found this video and you are liking the content, why not subscribe so you can find more of my content soon or even today. Find any of my videos. I've made about 1200 videos now, so I'm sure there is something there that you will enjoy making. Thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing. So let's get started. The multiple for this shawl is 5 plus 1. And we are going to be repeating two rows. So make sure you realize that you are doing a repeat of two rows. Although in the middle you're doing the same. At the beginning and the end you're doing different things. So that will make it a little bit more intricate for you to make sure that you are doing the correct thing at the start and at the end of the rows. But I'm going to do a small sample for you here so you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about. So it might be a good idea for you to make this small sampler as well which you can then keep with you when you're making the big shawl. So let's get started. We're going to get started by doing a slip knot insert your hook and for the big shawl you're going to chain 91. I'm going to chain 31. 1, 2, 3, 4, 29 and 30, 31. So here I have 31 chains. Now we are going to start row 2 and we're going to chain 1 I'm going to keep my eye on this 31st chain here. So chain one. This chain one is your turning chain. It doesn't count. We just do it to help ourselves turn. You turn. Then you're going to place in the 31st chain, you're going to place a single crochet. There we go. Okay. Now this looks a little bit funny, but it will be fine. Now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to skip four. So as you can see, this one has been used. One, two, three, four. Into the fifth one. This is the fifth one here. I'm going to go in. I always make sure there's one strand there and two strands on the back of my hook. Then I'm going to pull up a loop bring everything closer and do a single crochet. So we've made a loop. So that's what we're going to have to do. One, two, three, four and five. Then you skip four. One, two, three, four into the fifth for a single crochet. And this is how you are going to continue all the way to the end. One, two, three, four, five. And this is only row two. This is the row that we need to do to get started with our repeat. So this is just a preparation row. One, two, three, four, five. 
which we do before we actually start doing the actual stitch repeat. And if you have counted correctly, you will now have the exact amount left. So four to skip and one to use. So I'm going to use that very last one there. Get in there whichever way you can. I am trying to do that pick up as I usually do it. But if that doesn't work, then I'm not going to. Oh, yeah, I think I've done it. Uh, worry about it too much, but yes. So make sure you can get into this last stitch, pull it all a bit closed and do your single crochet. So now I have six loops, like so. You should have 18 of them. Now we're going to start row three and row three and row four are the rows that you're going to be keeping on repeating throughout the shawl, okay? So let's get started on the repeat rows. We're going to get started by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You turn your work and you're going to see and find the first loop. This is the first loop. You're going to go around the middle of the first loop and you do a single crochet. Voila. Okay, we have now started. This will create a straight edge here and we have started with half a loop. Now we are going to make our pico. Now this is not just any pico. This is what I call the super duper pico. <laughs> and this is how you are going to make it. So you're going to chain three, one, two and three. Then you're going to place a single crochet around this single crochet. So you're going to have to tilt your work slightly. You go into here, you pull up your loop and you do a single crochet. This has now brought that chain three back down again. But if we were to continue now, our um, next loop, so to speak, wouldn't come from the correct location. It would be too high up. So we're going to also anchor our super duper pico and we're going to go and do another single crochet around the loop there. So this is the construction of what we are making. This is what we are going to be calling our picos or yeah super duper picos because they're constructed a little bit different from the normal pico but they have the same effect and it's going to give a lovely effect in our shawl. So I'll show you again in a moment how to do it. Let's first continue. After your super duper pico, you're going to do five chains. One, two, three, four, five. You go to the next loop. You do your single crochet around the middle of the next loop. One, two, three chains. You go and open this up. Go in there, pull up a loop and do your single crochet and now you're going to anchor your pico down onto the loop again another single crochet around the loop there we go okay one two three four five around the loop single crochet one two three around the single crochet a single crochet around the loop a single crochet one two three four five and it becomes a little habit and it becomes quite fun to do just make sure you don't do five chains for your pico I've done that a couple of times when I wasn't paying attention okay so you're doing five chains to move to the next loop then you do your single crochet three chains single crochet around the single crochet, single crochet around the loop. One, two, three, four, five. And I am at the last loop already. Of course, if you're doing the shawl, your row will be a little bit longer. 
This is what it looks like right now. And so we started with a chain of six. Okay, so row three is the row where we start with the chain six. So we're going to have to end with technically what is called a chain six. So we are going to create six chains, but not by using six chains. So you're going to do one, two chains, because we have to end where I am now, but we have to close this part, we're going to do a treble crochet and that will take over the task of being the four chains. So two yarns overs into the single crochet from the row below. And this is a little bit funny because of course it's that starting one, just anywhere you can go in is fine. And you do your treble crochet. Voila. And this is the location where we need to be. So if you look at your work laying down, don't worry, okay, about this going like this. Because obviously we have done quite a lot of stitches, but we need them to make the squares, to make the holes, you see. So it will all work out in the end. So don't worry about that. What you need to keep an eye on is the sides. So these are the sides where we create the side and then two chains. So we start here with six chains. We make here that same size loop, but with two chains and a treble. So in row three, you will create 17 loops and two half ones. I have five loops and two half ones. Okay, so this is row three. Now for row four, we're doing a slightly different start and end, but we are doing the same thing in between. So row four, we're going to chain one, turn, and on top of the double crochet here, we're going to do a single crochet. There we go. Now we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and you turn, of course, and now you're going to go over that first super duper pico, go into the next loop here and do your single crochet and yeah, a super duper pico. I just came up with this name right now. <laughs> there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Into the next loop for your pico. And so this time we started our row two, three, four, with a single crochet and a chain five. And so that is also how we are going to have to finish our row with a chain five and a single crochet. So let's see if we can. In row four, you will have 18 loops and I will have six of them. Leila was just eating under the desk. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm at the end of my row. And remember here, we placed our first single crochet on top of the treble crochet, okay? So here we have one, two, three, four chains that take over the task of the treble crochet. So into the fourth chain, or if you count from here, it's the third chain. I'm going to go into there, voila, and I'm going to do my single crochet there. Okay, so this time we did not create a side, so to speak. We created quite a long side here. This time we created a lower side. And if you look at it like this, pull your base straight. You can pull up these loops. And of course, that is what they're designed to do. That is what they are meant for, for having the big holes in our shawl. There we go.
So now we go back to row three. And row three starts with a chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You turn and you're straight around this loop here. One, two, three. Do our pico, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. And off we go again. Now, as you can see, once again, we have done that big hole here. So we are going to have to make sure we finish with the big hole, which means we finish with a two chain and a treble crochet. So let me get to the end of the row and I will meet you there. So here we are, I've just done the pico around the last loop. Now we have to create the big hole because that's how we started with a chain six. So we're going to do a chain two and a treble crochet into the single crochet from the row below. And this is how we create our chain six at the end of the row. And of course we are now in the correct position as well to get started again for the next row. And this is how you are going to continue your work. So let's do another row four. So that means we are going to chain one, turn, do a single crochet on top of your treble crochet, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, skip the first pico, go around the next loop and do your picots. So I'm nearly at the end here and of course here is the one where we start with our chain five. So we have to end with a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we do our single crochet on top of the fourth chain or, you know, we started on top of the treble crochet. So you need to do that here in the fourth chain. There we go. So now you're going to have to keep on repeating these two rows. So row three, four, three, four, until your shawl is long enough for you. For me, it is quite long, as you can see, but that's how I wanted it. So I did 132 rows. Make sure you end in a row four. To finish, I'm going to show you what to do. So row 133, you're going to level off your shawl. So this is what we are going to do. So you chain one, you turn, and you place a single crochet in that first single crochet. Then we're going to do five chains, three, four, and five. And then you go across to the next chain here where you're going to be placing a single crochet. There we go. Then one, two, three, four, five. Around the next loop for a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Around the next loop, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. And this is how you will continue, of course, until the end of the row. So when you get to the end of the row, you will place a single crochet into that single crochet there. Voila, there we go. We have now made our shawl straight at the end as well. So I hope you will find it useful to make this small sampler as well, which will tell you clearly about the starts and the ends of the different rows. And that is all you need to keep in mind.
once of course you know how to do the middle bit where you're making your chains and your super duper picots it's going to be great fun but you just need to keep an eye on your starts and on your ends of the different rows. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you will try out this shawl. It was a lovely addition to my summer wardrobe and I loved wearing it on holiday. Thank you for watching this video. I am really happy that you are here and that you are part of my community. If you know other people who would enjoy my videos, please do share my videos with them so we can gain more people in our community. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!